thank you. Thank you very much, my comrades and friends. Let me thank our media friends for joining us this afternoon, as always, and coming to help us disseminate to Ghanaians the inauguration of our manifesto drafting committee. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the official beginning of the process towards getting down to the people of Ghana, to the grassroots of our country, and listening to the various views of our people on how we can make our dear nation a better place for everyone and not a few people. The National Democratic Congress remains grateful to you, members of the media, for your continuous interest in our activities. Activities that are aimed at restoring hope and addressing the increasing hardship inflicted on Ghanaians, unprecedented corruption, and the family and friends governance we are saddled with today. We will, through our manifesto, provide a robust set of policy options guided by research, but most importantly, by broad consultations to renew hope in the governance of our country, to accelerate what was a successful beginning to the diversification and transformation of our economy and significantly improve the living conditions of our people. Comrades in the past, our manifesto had been drawn up by a technical committee set up by the party largely based in Accra and producing for the party a document based mainly on the expertise of the membership. This manifesto will be different. It will be a manifesto that will be the conclusion of a long, detailed, consultative process involving broad interactions with our people, incorporating their concerns, their hopes, and their aspirations. Ahead of this process, two significant things have happened. In furtherance of our bottom-up approach strategy for drafting the 2020 manifesto, I have first put together a number of what we call policy working groups that cover the various sectors of our economy, including youth, job creation, agriculture, business development, health, energy, finance, economy, ICT, and innovation, amongst others. These working groups are made up of persons from the public and private sector with impeccable credentials, competences, and solid records of achievement. Indeed, some of them are private sector players and academics who you will not classify as politicians. They have been working very hard day and night, and I commend them for their time and energy spent over the past few months in the interest of our dear nation, Ghana. They believe collectively that we must rescue Ghana from this sinking ship. As a next step, and serving as a brain box of the Manifesto Committee, the policy working groups are expected to, together with the committee, to hold wider sessions, including what I have stated before, and called policy dialogue sessions in the various sectors that will be covered by the manifesto. And then again, I have together with my comrades, the party executive, and other colleagues, over the last few weeks, been engaged in consultative meetings with identifiable bodies, including workers' groups, such as the University Teachers Association of Ghana, UTAG, the Ghana Medical Association, and other key national stakeholders, like traditional authorities, the Catholic Bishops' Conference, the Pentecostal and Charismatic Council, 
traditional priests amongst others. We will continue this consultative process with many others, including the TUC, the ICU, mine workers, student unions, persons with disability, Federation of Muslim Councils, market women, fishermen, and other segments of our population. These interactions emphasize the importance we place and will continue to attach on the need for broad consultations and effective feedback from our people. Our approach is to develop a working and an organic manifesto that is from the people, is by the people, and for the people. The 2020 NDC Manifesto will be an affirmation of the sacred working contract we want to have with Ghanaians. And I promise you, we shall keep our promises. Yeah. When the average voter picks up the manifesto, he or she should at a glance be able to see in clear and simple terms what the NDC contracts to do in the next four years in his or her life, in his or her region, and in every segment of our national life. The next administration, my brothers and sisters, will either consolidate the faith of our people in our republican democracy or shatter it completely for good. NDC, through this manifesto and pragmatic policies, will restore the confidence of our people, not only in our democracy, but in the greatness of our country. I'm looking forward to a manifesto that Ghanaians can boldly hold and refer to and hold the NDC and myself accountable. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been there before. I have experienced it. I have learned useful lessons. I have reviewed issues and events. And I am coming back to you together with my party, the NDC, with what will be a practicable strategy for laying a solid foundation for the transformation of our country. We are coming to give you hope and address your concerns and challenges because we feel your suffering and we believe in opportunity for all, not just a, a few as we are witnessing today. In emphasizing the bottom-up approach to developing our 2020 manifesto, we are saying that as we go around the country, we have heard and considered the issues that you determine to be of concern to you. Therefore, as champions of participatory democracy and believers in giving true power to the people, the NDC remains the party of the people. And we will, through our manifesto, bring home that unique political characteristic of our party. Ladies and gentlemen, words they say reflect reality as it is. Sincere words can and do inspire a change of reality and circumstances. Your word, your promises to those who puts you in a position of trust is a sacred social contract that should never be taken for granted. Sadly, that word, that sacred bond and pledge, has been so abused that it no longer inspires trust, but rather rings hollow in the ears of the listener because of current happenings today. In 1992, we sparked hope in the hearts of Ghanaians with the promulgation of a new constitution unto ourselves. Faith in our new democracy was high, and Ghana became the toast of the Committee of Nations and was hailed as the model of democracy. Ghana was held as a champion in decentralization and economic transformation. Alas, the same cannot be said today. Our people are deeply demoralized and are increasingly losing faith 
in our democratic experiment. As a consequence, I have heard repeatedly people throwing their hands up in the air with despair and declaring it is no use voting. Politicians are all the same. In all humility, I disagree. Notwithstanding the unmatched legacy of visible, impactful development acknowledged and celebrated the world over, we in the NDC are humble enough to admit our shortcomings, and we refuse to cover them up. It is this admission that has led to sober reflections and corrective measures to give Ghanaians even better leadership when the NDC and I are elected by the good people of Ghana in December 2020. This is what stands us out as the best party to give Ghana honest and efficient leadership that truly encourages both supportive and dissenting views and contributions from our citizens. The party that I lead is made up of some of the most hardworking, resourceful, and experienced Ghanaians, with a singular focus of producing results for Ghanaians, not excuses or the blame game. Honor is an invaluable currency I do not take for granted. I stand by my words that notwithstanding the misinformation and propaganda of our opponents and their insincere promises, we in the NDC will not lie to Ghanaians. Yeah. We shall continue to be sincere and engage in the politics of honesty, not the politics of convenience. Today, three years into this administration, promises have turned out to be a grand deception. The much vaunted economic redemption has turned out to be an economic disaster in the lives of Ghanaians. As they see hardship and prices of fuel and utilities skyrocketing and the difficulty of living from day to day. The promised prosperity has been replaced with excruciating hardship and suffering, which have been the direct consequence of either ill-conceived policies or poorly implemented programs. Soon I'll be sharing my position on the state of our struggling nation with the good people of Ghana at a date to be announced. But allow me to say that as someone who took over from Professor J.E.A. Mills of blessed memory and supervised the Ghana Compact II negotiations with the Millennium Challenge Corporation and the U.S. government, I am deeply disappointed in Nana Akufuado's administration for his handling of the compact. Fellow Ghanaians, we are all deeply disappointed because of the self-serving decisions that we're taking. The deliberate acts perpetuated with the crude support of the Flagstaff House in the ECG concessionaire agreement that has led us to where we are today. This was absolutely needless and could have been avoided. I have just noted a decision by the NCC to withdraw $190 million of the funding amount. It's a sad day for us. This money was meant to improve the efficiency of our electricity utility uh, corporation. Let me emphasize that these shady happenings were absolutely avoidable if the right decisions were taken with the future development of Ghana in mind and not parochial decisions that reflect the sad and worsening situation of state capture that we are increasingly experiencing under the Akufuado administration. To conclude, ladies and gentlemen, let me congratulate the members of the NDC Manifesto Committee and remind you together with the working groups that Ghanaians are looking up to the NDC to reignite the hope that was kindled 
in our hearts in 1992 with the return to constitutional democracy. This must be a manifesto that ignites hope in Ghanaians. It must be a manifesto that incorporates the concerns of Ghanaians. And it must be a manifesto that restores the confidence of our people in the leadership. Together, we win 2020. I thank you very much. May God bless Ghana. May God bless the NDC. Thank you.